All right, well, we're super excited to have everyone here with us today. Um, we have Marion, who's a UW student. She is currently a junior. Um, and she is an expert in bullet journaling. She's led lots of workshops for the King County Library System around bullet journaling. And she's gonna be giving us a good intro to kind of talk about how you can use bullet journaling as a wonderful method for organizing your notes, organizing your thoughts, projects, all sorts of different things. Um, and you know, there's a great way to be creative with bullet journaling as well. So Marion will get into that. Um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off. I just wanna remind everyone we are recording today. You can go ahead and ask questions throughout in the chat. Um, we'll get to them throughout, but also we have time at the end. Um, and we'll share this recording with you in the slides via email at the end. Um, so if there's you know a certain slide you like, you'll get that later. So you don't have to try to write down all the text. Thanks so much, Marion. We're super excited to have you here. I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you. Um, so feel free to go to the second slide. Uh, so today we're just going to talk about what is bullet journaling exactly, uh, the basics that go into a bullet journal, uh, any stationary, and then just questions at the end. Next slide. Um, so hi again, uh, I'm Marion. I'm a junior studying art with a concentration of IVA, and I'm a student at the University of Washington. Um, for bullet journaling, I have this Instagram account, you can look it up, it's called Milk Tea Studies, and it's something that I've been using since sophomore year of my high school, and it was just pictures for note taking, bullet journaling, anything creative or art related. And then through there, I um, kind of expanded, I started working with like companies and in terms of like promoting like certain notebooks or any stationery. And um, I was an IB student in high school. So for my CAS project, I decided to go out and do a workshop of bullet journaling in downtown Seattle. And then from there, a person uh, who worked with the King County Library System was like, hey, do you, would you like to present on bullet journaling? And then from there, I started freshman year. I would say went to around nine libraries and then sophomore year went to around 11, just explaining what bullet journaling is and another way for you um, to be more organized. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, so this is my Instagram on the left right here. And I also have a website. Um, it's just milkteastudies.com. Uh, this blog post I have is just any, just current stationary, stationary items I've been using. So a planner, calendar, and some stuff like that. So just on the topic of like studying and bullet journaling, they're kind of like combined for me. Next slide. Uh, so this is a quote that I pulled from bulletjournal.com, which was kind of like the origin of bullet journaling. Um, this guy kind of made a notebook centered around the method of bullet journaling. So let me just read this quote. Though it does require a notebook, bullet journal is actually a methodology. It's best described as a mindfulness practice disguised as a product productivity system. It's designed to help you organize your what while you remain aware of your why. The goal of the bullet journal is to help its practitioners or bullet journalists live intentional lives, ones that are productive and meaningful. I really like this quote and the reason why I pulled it off from the website is I think it gives a clear and concise um, definition of bullet journaling. How I see it also is just like a unique journaling system that is designed to help organize your life. Uh, like a planner does, but in a more like personalized way. There's no right or wrong way to go about it. And as most people who bullet journal tell you, all you really need to start is a notebook and a pen. The rest is up to you. Um, next slide, please. So for bullet journaling, you should try it if you just have a lot of small to-do lists floating around and you wanna keep it more organized. If you like to write things down and along with note taking, writing things down helps you remember it more. Um, you like goal setting or habit tracking, keeping track of your water intake, um, what kind of food you eat, calories. Uh, you like stationary, journaling, scrapbooking, um, pens, all that sort of stuff. Um, you like planners or planning in general and or you just wanna be more organized. Um, so sometimes it's bullet journaling is a organized system to help you be more efficient. Bullet journaling is like a made up verb, the act of 
you um, writing in your bullet journal. And then Bujo is just a shorter term of bullet journaling. And it's uh, commonly used in like, the bullet journaling community. Next slide, please. Uh, so speaking from like personal experience, my own bullet journal has not like only helped me be more organized. It just helps me become more motivated as well. Uh, just writing in my journal, kind of like making it more creative and more artsy makes me want to come back and keep looking at it and like adding stuff to it. Uh, making lists worse and just adding that artistic element makes it more of a um, meditation vibe to my journaling experience. So um, this like couple of slides is just to show what kind of pages go into your bullet journal and I'm going to start with the basics. So every single bullet journal usually have some sort of table of context or index and it's there to keep you organized and what pages are where. So in the first few pages, maybe I have a yearly spread, monthly spread, and some other miscellaneous pages too. I can have that in my table of context and go, oh, okay, um, I wanna go to this page so I can just easily flip towards that. Along with the table of context, there's also a key or legend as well. And this is where the name bullet journal comes in. Bullet journal is just like the little like bullets um, that can easily mark off. Um, so in this, right picture right here, you can have a legend of, let's see, like there's the filled in circle, which means my task is complete. An empty circle means it's a task that's not complete. Um, if there's a line through the circle, it means that a line with an arrow means that I move that task to the next day and like any kind of symbols that help you make it easier for you to plan your day. Um, just make sure to have maybe some sort of key or legend so you remember what those symbols mean. Um, but you don't have to do that as well. You can just do little bullet points of tasks you have to do for the day and then you can just put an X over it, which means that you uh, finish those or just like across a strike through through your task. Next page or next slide, please. Okay, um, so another page would be a monthly spread. So the left here is actually a monthly spread I've made a few years ago and it's just a simple calendar of the month with like major events or spring break, uh, winter break as this month was for December and just some little cute doodles there to, you know, I like Christmas. So just getting ready for the holidays. And then on the right picture is a more, I would say, very structured uh, bullet journal spread of, let's see, March. So there's some like geometric art doodles on the side, but also like a little calendar. And also I would say like a monthly spread of just like the first of the month all the way to the end and just like simple major events or anything that's going on during those days. Um, also my monthly spreads, I like to include monthly goals or things I would like to accomplish before the end of the month. Next slide. And then, so weekly and daily spreads. Since monthly spreads are more of a general overall of what's going on in the month, I would like to make it more detailed by having weekly and or daily spreads. An example of this is the left photo is just a daily spread of what happened today. So just like a brief summary if my day went well, if there was something going on, and then a few tasks or events that I'm having as well below my little summary, along with some uh, stickers I put in there for kind of like decoration. And then on the right side is a Muji undated weekly planner. So on the left, it has Monday, Monday through uh, Sunday, and then just any dates so I could use it anytime. With also some um, tasks I'm doing or any events, and then on the right side, it's a gridded piece of paper so I can add like doodles, maybe something um, that happened, some scrapbooking or any like detailed stuff. So it really is like up to you um, and anything that like pertains to you pretty much. Uh, daily spreads, you can use them for maybe like journaling entries or anything you wanna reflect on on that day. And those can take up to like maybe half a page or a page just depends if you have the time or want the time to write things down. Next slide, please. 
a timetable. This is especially useful for me as a college student. Um, I am full-time student at UW and also part-time working at Apple. So I like to block things out of classes I have. So today I had a Nutrition 200 and then Art 190. So just sectioning um, those classes out on my day so I can see what empty spaces or what free time I have. So maybe I wanna go over the syllabus or I wanna go over um, the Zoom recording I had and just kind of like reflect on there. And also for my week, I can block out like my work shifts I have so I can figure out maybe in the following couple weeks when midterms are starting up, I can figure out what uh, time I have to go towards studying and just see if I'm free or not. So it's really useful and also useful for um, you guys who are like working full time and just see if you have any other free time to take up any new hobbies or something like that. Next slide. Um, and then even like with those pages, you have other pages you can add into your bullet journal as well. So a year in review, just, you know, how was like 2020 or just 2021 of uh, starting January all the way to December. And then habit trackers, like I said, um, you can go into more detail if you want to do a monthly habit tracker, just like the first all the way to like the 30 or 31st. Um, or you want to do a weekly one. So just by week, see how much uh, water you've had or anything you want to track, like expenses as well is a really big one. And um, what I'm trying to do in my current bullet journal. And then some other pages too is movies you want to watch, books you want to read, uh, recipes or restaurants you want to try, swatches. Um, I usually have this pages if I have like new stationery, so new pens, and I want to test those pens out on a on my bullet journal to see if it would bleed through, if they're too thick, um, and just see how it feels for the page, or just like any new washi tape you've gotten, just kind of like swatch it there so you can see the collection you have. And then, you know, goals, uh, New Year's resolution, any reflections you have, birthday log, pretty much anything that you like and you want to keep track of, pretty much. Um, so I like, so for example, like if you watch a lot of TV shows, just kind of like um, keeping track of that. And then at the end, if you finish the season or the TV show, you can write a little review of it as well and kind of rate that. Next slide. Um, also for like, if you have any um, more ideas or you want to look for more ideas, Pinterest is always a good resource to use because um, a lot of people pin their bullet journal spreads there, but also any page ideas you would like to add. Uh, so for stationery, what can you use um, for a bullet journal? There's a pen and a notebook, but some people like to be more detailed and it's like, what kind of notebook can I use or what kind of pen can I use? Um, so notebooks to start off with is the type of paper, right? So these four photos right here are four different kind of bullet journal spreads ranging from lined paper to graph paper to dotted paper and to blank paper. Um, and it just depends on the type of person, right? So some people like blank notebooks because there's no restrictions or nothing on the page at all. So you feel more free to just write anything. But some people like more structure. So dotted lines or graph rolled paper. Um, just depending on preference and stuff, or if you want to make sure your words are just all in like one straight line. Um, the dotted journal was also super popular when this whole bullet journal trend uh, came out because like it's bullet journal dotted, it's very, very like similar. Um, or you can use like line paper as well if you don't have anything else. Really just depends up to you. Um, but I feel like um, explaining the type of paper or what kind of papers in a notebook is very helpful. Um, because after all, you want this notebook as personalized as you can to help you be more efficient in your day to day life. So it's very important to make sure the stuff you're using, you like using that, if that makes sense. Uh, next slide. Um, so here are some brands if you guys want to look for new notebooks to sell your bullet journal. So there's Muji, Midori, Moleskin, uh, 1917, 
really just depending on the type of paper you're interested in, um, but also any notebook you have lying around works as well. Uh, next slide, please. And then pens. Um, so what's really interesting, as soon as I started bullet journaling, I only write in pen. I don't write in pencil anymore because um, I realized writing in pencil a lot, it's easily smudged. Um, so I started using gel pens instead. And I like gel pens because they're a lot more smooth, but any sort of pen or pencil, depending on your preference, um, works as well. So in these photos, some of the pens I use is Muji pens, uh, Pilot Juice, but also like the original like Pilot G2 where you can find anywhere is a really good pen as well, as long with the Zebra Sarasa clip. And like to also be more specific in like the types of pens, um, there's also sizes as well. So if you can see on this uh, Pilot Juice, there's like a small number right here. This is 0.38 on the top right corner. That is the size nib of the pen. Uh, so it ranges from any number. I've seen 2, 0.25, 0.38, 0.5, 0 0.7, 1 1.0. And it just depends on the thickness, right? So 1.0 is very thick. That's a lot of ink. And it also means that it takes more time for the ink to dry, right? Um, which means you can't write a ton because if you do, you accidentally smear the ink over and you have a lot of smears on your page, right? So uh, my preference, I like 0 0.25, 0 0.38, and sometimes 0 0.5 because the less ink means the quicker it is to dry. Um, so it just depends on preference too, because some people like, you know, thick ink, um, but it just depends if you want smears or if you are willing to wait a little longer for the ink to dry before continuing to write. So there's like different sizes too, as long with the different kinds of pens or inks. Okay, next slide. And then highlighters or other pens as well. Um, you can use highlighters to kind of emphasize on things you write in your bullet journal. Um, though I would advise that you highlight first and then write over because sometimes if you write and pen especially and you highlight it over right away there's like also a smear in the title too um, so that's something to look out for and then there's uh, zebra mile liners or iconic duo deco right and these two are double-sided too so there's like a highlighted side and a pen side as well and that's just for like you know if you want to add more artistic elements to your bullet journal but these aren't like necessary um, and then on the bottom left, there's also calligraphy pens. And uh, when I started bullet journaling, I also self-taught myself calligraphy because I thought it was like really cool. And some elements too, if you wanna have like big titles, like I can write March and calligraphy and underneath have like a monthly spread or review of March. And then, so there's just like other pens or other things that you can also use. Next slide, please. And then some other things as well with like having a pen and notebook and just, you know, writing down all your spreads and things that you've done today. Um, you can also add some other elements as well. So there's stickers that you can use, right? To like make it, you know, pop more. Washi tape is a really uh, big thing as well because as long like adding in color too, you can also add borders and it helps make your bullet journal more structured. And then you can like scrapbook some stuff as well. So maybe something happened today and you wanna like tape on a like receipt, like um, just anything, maybe pictures as well. Just anything that is personal to you. And then here's some example of some spreads I've done. Right, so the left one, you can see it was really simple. I just went down in the line of things I had to do today and then some other elements as well. I put on some stickers, I drew some plants. At the bottom, I have like a super small um, monthly spread and just like having it there because I can see, oh, okay, this date falls on a Saturday, right? So it's just really a quick glance for me to look at. Uh, on the right side, the dates like Monday, Tuesday, I used like stamps, right? Cause I wanted to have a little uh, 
theme to it and then along with some stickers and then some little scrapbook of like this Muji loose leaf that I got. Um, so sometimes, um, especially in like my older spreads too, I have some sort of theme I would like to follow in terms of like colors or like stickers. Um, so yeah, and then I also have some more in the next slide. Um, and then these were more um, colorful, right? So on the left side, I had like these stickers, but also because of those stickers, I wanted to have some sort of like color theme to it as well. So I kind of doodled on some more stuff. Um, and I had like had a lot of time on my hands. So I wanted to make it more like maximalistic. Max, I think that's a word. Um, so just like, you know, not to have any empty spaces on that spread. And then on the right side, it was kind of more minimal. I had less color. Um, and just for the photo, I taped a little uh, baby's breath on there as well, because um, I thought it would match the theme. And next slide. And then these, the right one especially is more recent. Um, I've been like busier and busier, so I haven't had time to sit down and make all these like really huge spreads that I have. Um, but on the left side, this was a ringed notebook that I have, and I think it was also graphed as well. Um, just like, you know, similar thing. I had these stickers. I had like some sort of color palette I went through and kind of just like follow through there. On my right side, I used um, stickers that I made myself and then some photos I found on Pinterest and Tumblr, printed those out. This was more like a collage as well. And then I think I have one more slide of spreads. Yeah, so these are more recent. Um, as I showed in like the last couple of slides, these are more simple, just like jotting things down. Okay, I need to do this. And then I'm gonna look back at it later and just cross it out. Um, but yeah, these are just like some simple spreads I've had and they're mostly like that now. Um, Cause I feel like that's my kind of style. Um, and also I can show right now, I'm currently using um, this Hobo Nietzsche notebook right here. Um, and let's see, let's take these papers out. So with this notebook, it has, let's see, a really cool monthly spread right here. So it already has like the month out for me. And some people like having this um, spread or some people like to make it themselves. So I have this one right here that's already in the notebook. Um, and then we also included some like kind of weekly spread too. And I really like the style. I think um, what is called the passion planner does a really good job of just having this template out because you can easily also block out uh, time. So maybe from like five to eight, I have something um, and just stuff like that as well. And then after having these like weekly spreads, I also have the blank daily spreads, right? Um, let me see. I have this page right here, um, a daily spread. So it would have like maybe things I have to do or just little little summaries or sentences. Um, I also added a ton of stickers. Um, let's see. And then also this spread as well. Uh, the Hobo Nietzsche notebook I am using is this one. It's an A5. There's also a smaller size too, I think B6. Um, when you like look into more of notebooks and bullet journaling, you also uh, notice that there's sizes A5, A4, uh, just depending on preference. I know some people like small, uh, smaller notebooks um, because it's easier to carry with them. And then along with those spreads, I ha also have smaller spreads or just like, um, I would say chicken scratch this like really messy handwriting um, of just things I need to do. Cause sometimes I don't have time and I need to quickly write it down before I forget. Um, and let's see. Okay. Um, but yeah, just like, you know, using this notebook, but also I am having fun with the six ring binder. I have a smaller version. I have a spread right here and I like these because I can, um, I'm able to like take it out and then just fold it like this. Um, so my hand doesn't like bump over the rings and then just place it back together and yeah. Just 
It's like a bunch of spreads. Um, also some really messy scratches. So sometimes I have like really nice spreads and sometimes I don't. It's just depending on my day. And um, to start off for bullet journaling, keeping it simple is very essential. Um, I know like showing all my stuff, you guys are really motivated, inspired to try something like that. But I would advise you do like trials and errors or just testing things out, whatever works with your style before trying something new. Um, and bullet journaling is just like, you know, this whole journey of things testing out. Um, maybe you don't like adding a bunch of stickers or maybe you just like jotting things down or maybe you have all this time you want to decorate it Oh, so sorry, my cat. Uh, decorate as much as you can. Um, and it just depends on your preference, your time. Just if you have the time to do it, you can. If you don't, you can try something that fits with you. Um, so I will, let's see. I think we'll read some off. Yeah, um, so we got one question earlier and it says, do you color code your journaling? Um, and if not, when would you recommend that? Hmm. I would use color coding, I think, for my classes. So um, for the timetable, maybe for nutrition, I have it blocked out as like this green square and then anything green related, I can color code. So, oh, I have like an assignment in a couple of days. I should take a look at that or I should go back to the syllabus and I would use that color coding when it comes to the task. Um, maybe for a task that I have or an assignment for like nutrition, right, that I have for today, maybe the dot will be green so I know it for that class. Um, also, my cat's name is Cinnabon, and he is currently one year old. Awesome. It looked like Karen asks, uh, well, first she says these are beautifully done, but then also do you doodle and design as you go, or do you add your doodles after the fact? Um, I do a little bit of both. So, um, so most of the time, let's see, I've been doing a lot more daily spreads lately instead of weekly spreads. So I like to doodle in like some empty spots, kind of write out what I did today, any task, and then maybe just cover um, more empty space with more doodles. So it's kind of just like both. And Melissa asks, um, how do you know how many pages to make for each section when you're first starting? Or is it just kind of trial and error? Um, I would say trial and error, but it also kind of depends on your handwriting and how big you write things. Um, for a typical monthly spread or a yearly spread, if you have just January to December, it could be one page because you would do three by four. Um, or if you want it to be a lot bigger, you would have two pages of like six on one side and six on the other side. Um, but I would recommend maybe having a pencil and kind of like writing it out first or sketching out where you want it to be on your page and then doing that. Totally. And what about with the um, kind of with your table of contents? How many pages do you recommend setting aside for that? Let's see, I would say around um, four, three or four. And um, it's okay to have too much because you will have some like empty space that was originally for your table of contents, but now it's like all full. You can add like another page for that. So. Maybe you can add like a scrapbooking page or like um, if COVID wasn't here, like movie tickets and just pasting it on there. Um, just anything you want, really. Makes sense. Betsy says, um, do you journal throughout the day or in the morning or at the end of the day? I journal in the morning, right? When I start my day to see if any things I need to do or check from yesterday if any things I had listed for yesterday wasn't completed. And then at the end of the day, again, kind of just to review um, my day to see if I finished anything and maybe a little summary of how my day went. And then also kind of along that line, so if you have multiple notebooks, how do you keep track of what is in which notebook? Um, I would say maybe just having like a label on the outside. Um, I usually keep one notebook for one year as much as I can. If I happen to run out, I would get a second one and be like, oh, this is like part two of the first notebook. Um, but just like, I would have like a little label on the outside too. All right, I'm just scrolling through lots of great questions. How long does it typically take you to do a nice spread with art um, and design? I would say around 30 minutes to an hour. Um, 
first of all, I just, you know, my tasks, writing all that stuff, and then see any doodles or anything I want to draw, um, maybe relating to what happened during that day. Um, but I could, I would say around 30 minutes to an hour. And also, where do you buy your stickers? Seems like a lot of interest in kind of the artistic um, side. So I actually have an Etsy shop open. Um, so some of the stickers I use are from there. But also I've been um, really obsessed with, let me see, <laughs> Korean stickers. I've been buying from a lot of like international websites. And I have, let me show you. I have this cute little binder right here. And in each binder, there's like some pages of stickers I've kept track of. So here, um, and then when I want to use them, I just take it out of the sleeve and then right here and then just put it back. I've been buying a lot of stickers lately and I wanted to keep track or be more organized. So I just had a little binder and then just slipped it in there. Um, but I would say Etsy or um, just any websites. I know mochithings.com has a bunch of stickers and they're from Seattle, which is really cool. Um, Pinterest too, you can find stickers. Honestly, like there's a lot of places where you can buy stickers and support um, artists. Let's see, yeah, Daiso, I agree too. There's also um, the bookstore on the app and there's also the bookstore uh, next to Waijimai in Chinatown. That has a lot of cool stationery as well. And they also have a lot of cool pens and notebooks and I've gotten some things from, from there. Um, most like some bullet journal, but mostly for school and studying because um, you have a lot of different kinds of paper. I think Redbubble too, for those who aren't mm -hmm. aware, um, you can support local artists, like artists can put their stickers on Redbubble. I could be wrong in how I'm describing it, but that's a good sticker site too, I think. Um, so another question is just how long have you been bullet journaling and how did you first get into it? Uh, let's see, let me count sophomore, junior, senior. Five years, I would say around five years I've been bullet journaling. Uh, pretty much when I started that Instagram account. Um, and I got into it uh, because I was on Tumblr and my friend was also interested and we were actually looking at stationery. So that zebra mile liner that I showed earlier was what like hooked me in. And I started looking into people who had their like notes written out all nicely and stuff. Um, and I like started doing that first, right? Because um, when I'm in lecture in school, I like typing out my notes because it's like the fastest way for me, but then I go home and then pretty much rewrite what I typed um, because I get to like see, um, remind myself what that lecture was, but also write it down so I have, um, I remember it more. And then through that, I started looking to other people who were doing the same thing and I noticed that they were also using bullet journals, right? Um, so I was like, oh, this is really cool. What is this? And then I did some little research on Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest. Um, and then I got a notebook off Amazon, which was the Midori MD. It's around $10, $11. Um, and I, then I just pretty much started through there. So another question, and again, you know, we have a lot of questions. I know we've got um, a good amount of time here. So I'm just going to keep firing them off. If anyone wants to raise your hand and ask a question too, you're welcome to. I'll keep an eye on that uh, participants bar. So Anne asks, do you keep a separate task list or like a to-do list? And then do you put in what you accomplished that day on the daily spread? Uh, maybe you can just talk a little bit more about kind of your process with your task to-do list versus a daily spread. Um, so for a task to-do list, it's just straight bullet points, just like one after another. And then a uh, daily spread is like more of a journal entry. So um, sometimes I go into detail of what I did or how I did certain things. Um, so like, um, I know the last few weeks I've been planning to open a sticker shop, right? So just writing down a timeline of things I need to do, um, kind of going into more detail of my simple tasks of uh, plan sticker shop just like you know oh, okay there's some things I need to do or it's just like a simple journal entry of what happened today um, so they're um, kind of just depends sometimes it just joined in together that I have a little journal entry but at the bottom I have this really like um, small to-do list of things I need to do and just cross things out if I did them or not and have you seen any digital versions of bullet journals that I you like? I have actually, um, I haven't seen it a lot, um, 
but there are some templates too for uh, digital bullet journaling. Um, I know some people use GoodNotes for note taking, but also for bullet journaling as well. I'm not really sure of any other resources, but um, if I do, I would love to share that on my website. And then we had one more question come in. What size is your journal? And then how do you recommend kind of finding a good size for you or where people should start? Um, let's see. I believe the one that I showed right here is A5. And I think this is a really good size to start off with. And then from there, you can think, oh, is this like the good size for me? Or I want something smaller. Like this is pretty small. Um, it also depends too. If you like making really nice spreads, a bigger size would be good, um, but also smaller size for just some quick jotting down like to-do lists would be good as well. So it sounds like it really just kind of depends on, you know, how you, your personal journal or notebook turns out um, or what you need it for. I guess um, that's about all the questions we've got so far. One thing I, I would love to just hear you share and expand on one more time is just for those who have attended and find this concept really interesting and like to get more into it. Do you have any specific resources you would recommend we check out just for when we're first getting started? Ooh, okay. Um, I would say I can't think of like a specific person or like planner company right off the top of my head, um, but I would definitely just type in bullet journal on Pinterest and just look to see what other people have been doing, kind of get inspired. Um, if you already have a notebook, you can start jotting down spreads you want to have or start maybe going on Amazon. Um, I also have a video on my YouTube channel as well of different kinds of planners, which bullet journal is like a kind that you can use, but there's also some other planners that have like maybe all these templates out for you if you don't have time to make all these spreads or they're like half and half. So. Um, that one weekly undated planner I showed, even though I had like a little um, template already pre, um, already there just of the weekly spread, but also a gridded page on the other side. So I can still have time to make um, my own spreads as well. Um, yeah, so just like kind of looking through, um, I think Pinterest is like the biggest resource. That's a good reference. Awesome. Thank you. And a few people also shared some stuff in the chat. Um, we do have a question that if we could just go over the kind of the specifics of the beginning, um, for just for some people who came in late. So I'm going to go ahead and just reshare the slides since we have time, if you wouldn't mind if we just go over kind of the basic layouts again. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll pull that up. All right. I'll let you take it from here. Um, so to review the basis, basics again of a bullet journal would be just table of contents for index, table of content, contents or index, so sorry. Um, just like overview of what pages you have in your notebook or what kind of spreads you have. Um, so I really like this one on the left though because within that index, it kind of like groups together. Oh, so for planning, I have January, February, March logs or monthly spreads and then below that personal. So like any pages you have, reading log, um, movie, what movies to watch, um, TV show review, uh, stuff like that. Just to like group together and it's an easy way to find certain pages. Or you can also include a key or a legend as well. Um, if you have like, if you wanna use certain symbols, for tasks, so like maybe a circle for just regular tasks, a triangle for appointments, a square, you know, stuff like that. Um, you can just like make a key and legend to make sure what shape corresponds to what task. Um, but if you don't want to do that, that's okay as well. You can just do simple bullet points and just cross things over. Um, for the index or table of contents, you can just number. I usually number the pages on the right corner. So I know what to which to flip through. And then along with the table of contacts and legend, um, there's also let's see, next slide. Uh, yearly monthly spread. Um, I just included monthly spread here because I feel like it's more used. Um, so you can choose between like showing your calendar, um, maybe having a monthly habit tracker of water intake, finances, expenses. 
are having just like you could see on the right photo the first of the month all the way to the 31st of like any events holidays birthdays you want to include um, I also like to include to-do list or things I want to accomplish by the end of the month so monthly goals and then along with the monthly spread there's also the weekly and daily spread which either one you want to use um, so what I talked about this planner right here it's weekly spread but I could also could add some uh, journal entries in here as well or any reflections um, and then on the left side was more of a simple daily spread of like how I felt today um, sometimes I like to add the weather if it was nice or sunny and then any to-do list or any tasks that I had so on the left I had um, Let's see, I had a spread to do. I had like one or two interviews. Um, I have to like rewrite some of my notes. Uh, so stuff like that. And then after the weekly daily spread, that's pretty much it. Um, I also use a timetable to keep track of my classes and shifts I had and any time in between those two things would be free time for me. Maybe I wanna play, um, some games that I've been wanting to play or I need to study because I have a midterm coming up. Um, so stuff like that, it's really easy to look at a glance and see what uh, blocks have already, or what time has already been uh, uh, used for school or work. And then just seeing all this empty space that I have that's potentially could be used for uh, study time or other uh, things I wanna do. All right, thank you. And then for those who did come late, we are recording. So I'll make sure and um, that you get the video via email for any other parts you might've missed. We do have one more question. Um, it's so as far as the index goes, do you number the pages yourself? Do you buy notebooks that have numbered pages? Do you recommend one over the other? Um, I would probably recommend notebooks. I already have numbered pages because it takes less time for you to actually write it. Um, but what I do, I only just write the odd numbers. So like one, three, five. I don't write every single page with every single number, just like maybe odds or even so I can easily, oh, if this is on page four, it's between three and five. So I just flip to three and then that's the page right there. All right, well, I'm looking, I'm not seeing any other questions. Maybe we can give it a virtual minute here, but um, I hope you're seeing the chat. Lots of kudos, people are loving your artwork. And obviously, um, you know, if you're on Instagram or YouTube, you can definitely check out more work from Marion. Um, and you know, you are very talented. So thanks so much for sharing your work with us and your different spreads. It's been really fun to see. Yeah, feel free to email me, uh, message me on Instagram or any other platform. I would love to give out like a list of like resources of stationery or notebooks or uh, things you wanna look into. Um, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, so we can definitely package some materials and send them to everyone um, who accepted the calendar invite, um, as well as the slides. I'll make sure you get those. Thanks so much, Mary, and I hope you guys all, um, you know, learned something, have a little something to launch off for. I know someone shared in the chat. It's kind of perfect timing to be thinking about this with April 1st right around the corner. So maybe we can all get started um, this spring. I'm going to go ahead and close this out here. Um, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and week, um, and I'll see you on email. Thanks again, Mary, and we really appreciate your time.